Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. Today we have a super sweet blue-red Eldrazi control list for Standard. This one recently took Elian Trazi to a second place finish at a SCG Super IQ, so congrats to Eli on his finish with the deck. Quick reminder before we break down the craziness of Blue Red Eldrazi Control, if you enjoy this deck and want to see it made into videos, take a second, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. Anyway, Blue Red Eldrazi Control for Standard. So, we've seen a lot of decks in Standard looking to cast Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Most of those decks are green-based ramp decks playing this as Pilgrimage, playing Explosive Vegetation. All these cards that their only purpose is to ramp. They pull lands out of your library, put them on the battlefield. So, those strategies are fine, but they have one major flaw, and that is ramp cards by themselves are horrible. If you just draw all explosive vegetations and this is pilgrimages, you're not going to win the game. On the other hand, if you draw all Ulamogs and big finishers, you're still not going to win the game. So those decks sometimes lose just by drawing the wrong half of their deck. If you draw a good mixture of ramp spell, ramp spell, ramp spell, finisher, your deck looks insane, but when things don't go perfectly, you got a problem. This deck is unique because it's not filling its deck with crappy ramp cards. It's still looking to cast Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger and also Drowner of Hope, but the only real ramp card in the whole deck is Hedron Archive, and Hedron an archive gets a pass because yes it's a ramp card its primary goal is to add two mana but you can cash it in for two cards whenever you want to so in the worst case it's a really expensive colorless divination so it's not like explosive vegetation where it does nothing when you don't have your finisher so i just said the deck doesn't have ramp cards how is it casting ulamog well it's using its lands to ramp, and this is awesome because lands are such low opportunity cost. Instead of filling your deck with bad cards, like Explosive Vegetation and This Is Pilgrimage, you can play good cards, and then you use your lands, which you gotta play anyways, to be able to cast your big finishers. So Majoring Network can store up mana to cast your Ulamog. Shrine of the Forsaken Gods can tap for two if you have at least seven lands. In Spawning Bed, you can sack it to make a bunch of Scion tokens, which then you can sack to add mana. So instead of playing all these bad ramp cards, you play lands, which you gotta have in your deck regardless, and you use them to cast your big finishers, like Ulamog. And since your deck isn't cluttered up with explosive vegetations, you get to pay, play real control cards that actually do something. So you get four Clash of Wills, four Spell Shrivels, and it confirms Suspicion. So these cards obviously interact with the opponent, slow them down while you're storing up your mana, waiting to get to your big finishers. And then you get some removal as well. Spatial Contortion kills things in the early game. Kozlix Return wipes away Mono White Humans, Bant Company, those type of decks. And then Chandra does a little bit of everything. It is a finisher if you need it to be. Just make those elemental tokens on an empty board. It closes out the game really quick. You can also use it to find what you need by discarding your hand and drawing more cards. But most of the time, you play it, you wrath away all your opponent's stuff, keep storing up your mana, and eventually win with Ulamog. And then you get to play some Anticipates to find the pieces that you need. And Jace, I'm assuming you just pretty much use it to, as something that sits on the battlefield and scries and draws every single turn. Uh, but you can bounce a creature if you need to. So instead of playing all those bad green cards, you get to play an actual control deck but eventually, you still have the inevitability of winning with Drowner of Hope slash Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Uh, so this deck is pretty exciting for that reason. Mana base, a bunch of blue-red duels, including Wandering Fumeral and some basic islands, on top of the colorless ramping lands we already talked about. And then in the sideboard, you got Reality Smashers, an additional Drowner of Hope, I'm assuming for when you need to tap things down, and a P and Karen uh, And then a bunch more removal, this is kind of the aggro package, Fiery Impulse, Roast, and Kozilex Return, if you're playing Mono White Humans, Bant Company, uh, various right stacks. These are the cards you want in your deck to stay alive till you get to your Ulamog. And then the Control Deck Pack, Package, Negate, and Fevered Visions, one of my favorite sideboard cards in control matchups. You play it on turn three, and it a lot of times wins the game on its own, and that is Blue Red Eldrazi Control. The deck looks super spicy. I like that it's a unique take on the ramp deck that doesn't make you fill your deck with kind of subpar cards. Anyway, thank you very much for watching our Blue Red Eldrazi Control Instant Deck Tech. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon.